Welcome back to my channel team. In this video, we are going to be looking at the pivot table. We have five working examples for you. And thank you to a subscriber, Alberto Arias, for requesting this video. Thank you. In this video, we are going to look at how to pivot data in SQL. Before we do the pivot table, let's see what the data looks like in simpler terms. Notice here that I'm getting the customer ID. I'm taking the order date and I'm just ripping out the year. And then I'm doing a sum on the total column, which gives me total cost. And then I'm limiting all this data to just one customer. Now, because I'm using the sum function, uh, that's an aggregate function, so I have to do a group by. And I'm going to group by the customer and the year. So whenever you have an aggregate function, just highlight your other columns and drop them in the group by. That's all you have to do. And this order is telling me sort by the second and third columns. Let's see what happens. Notice this is telling me my customer, this is the year, and the total cost. So notice that we limited it to one customer. And when I did that query, it went out there and pulled out 2011 and 2013. And the sum summed up all his orders for that particular time period. Now, when we're doing a pivot, what we're really saying is, hey, let's rearrange the data a little bit more organized. And it doesn't mean it's right. It just is different. So let's see what we do here. So here we got an outer SQL statement that says select everything that I'm about to do. And here I say from, and I have an embedded SQL statement that's kind of like a view, if you will. And I'm saying select the customer ID, the year, and the total. Notice, just like I did up here, except I didn't do the sum function here. I'm just saying go get that data. Now, had I just executed this data, notice that it comes out and it shows me that I have three rows, right? And then that will be saved. Then this data migrates down to the pivot and notice that I do a sum on the subtotal for the year. And here you can see that I said, well, while the year is in, this is like your basic in clause in SQL. So four is the field and where this value is either to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now you have to put these brackets around the values. And that's about the only rule you really need to know. So let's highlight this and see what happens. And notice that for this customer, for 2011, 3399, and 2013, 4849. Let's execute both of these. And notice that we have the same data. So for 2011, 3399, 3399, 4849, so once again, is this is just a regular SQL where we do group by. And then this one right here is a pivot. Pretty sweet, yeah? Excellent. Let's look at the next example. Well, the next example is uh, pretty much the same. I'm gonna now go get all the data that's in that table. And notice that I've returned a lot of data. A lot of data has been returned. But now what I want to do is I want to do that same pivot on all the data. And let's see how we do that. So notice it's the same SQL statement, but now I've written it in one line. The last time, notice that when I did the from, I made it all nice and formatted. But you can do it all in one line. And then I'm going to sum that subtotal. And for the year, I'm going to put it inside of its brackets as we just learned we have to have. And now I will execute that. Execute. Now notice we did it for four years and I have all the data. Pretty sweet. Excellent. And that's pivoting on all the data. Let's look at another example to see if this is starting to settle in. Notice here, I have another SQL statement that uses the same columns, but we reformatted the numbers. 
Now notice that I used a Y and then I casted the year of the order date as a varchar 4 and when I put them together it will be Y. Now you see this? This is different from the last one where we actually did not have the Y character. But here, whatever this character evaluates to, that's what you see in. So this field, the year, notice that we're getting the year of that. It casts it out to this value. Let's see what happens now. And notice our column headings are Y. And now this could be a function we're returning from a web service with a good name, which is pretty nice. So here you can see you can build any column heading that you want to see. Now let's change it up quite a bit. We're going to look at a different table. And notice here we're going to um, do it a little bit differently. So I'm going to get the year of the modified date and I'm going to be using Y year. And then I'm going to be getting the product ID. Now I went and did a separate query just so I could see what's coming out of here, just so I would know what I'm doing. So notice here that I'm getting all these different products. And I didn't want to list them all, so I went out there and I took four products. I took the product ID. And here you can see in my base select statement, I'm using the product ID. And I'm getting the use price unit price. When I get inside of my pivot, notice I have no sum here. I'm just getting the column. This is raw data. Then I'm going to use the sum method. The sum method is an aggregate function. And I'm saying for that product, product, product ID, where it's in one of these values. And notice I have to use those brackets. And then when I hit that, We've only got data between 2011 and 14. So in 11, no products were sold. And then 93,915 in 2012. So you see, this right here is a great use of the pivot table. Now the only thing that's kind of unknown are these numbers on the top. You know, that's great for programmers, but that's no end user would really understand that. So is there a way to make that a little bit different? Of course. And how, how would we do that? So clean this up a little bit more. And notice now that I'm getting the product type name. So if we just execute this select statement, notice that I get the year, the product type name, and a cost. Now down here, I'm still doing the sum Notice that I'm just getting the raw price of the unit price, but now I'm going to do the end clause on these names. I had to copy these into these little brackets. Now once I had this all available, I can highlight this, and now it just makes a little bit more sense. So notice my end clause come to the top, my years are down the side, and here are the cost. That's pretty sweet, you guys have to admit. Now, let me show you one little trick I did so you, you wouldn't have to do so much typing. You can come out here and actually build this pattern so you don't have to type those in. And uh, SQL is giving us this thing called quote name. And you can go put values in there, get these into a list, and then just paste them inside of our code, right? And then just put commas there. So that saves you a little bit of time. There you have it. You did it, team. Pivot is in the bag. If this video helped you at all, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do that as well by pressing that red subscribe button below. All right, you guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you back on the next video.